Lynn Cullen live in one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. How quickly we are misunderstood. It's so true. I just thought I made a compliment to Mr. Potter, which he took for... <laughs> an insult. An insult. No, I give up. Yeah. That's what happens when you work with neurotic talent. You know? <laughs> well do I know it. Yes. Um, yeah, well, Chris Potter was on a... Another a rival broadcast. A, I wouldn't call it a rival. <laughs> you are unrivaled. <laughs> That's right. He was on a rival broadcast yesterday, and uh, I caught him as he was exiting the building to a, to go to their studio. Yes. Did I not? You did. Yeah. And uh, I told you I would. Uh, what you said is I made an effort to listen. <laughs> Well, right, which made it, which to me made it sound like you were like, oh God, I, didn't, oh, I want to turn this off. No, no, <laughs> no. It's my friend and frequent guest. That's right. No, I made an effort. Either way, to remember, <laughs> to listen. You gave me the information, yes. uh, you know, an hour before your yes. appearance, yeah. and I had a lot of things in between. And amazingly, I remembered. Good. Well, I'm glad you listened. Thank so you. he was on the uh, NPR station. Yeah, Essential Pittsburgh. Oh well, I met I met Paul Guggenheimer, which yeah, I had not he, met he before. A nice guy? He's a f- he is a very a nice fine fellow. fellow. He's a very nice fellow. Yes. Um. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Where would he come? Yeah, I know he's originally from. He's Pittsburgh. from here, and then he, he actually, I think from? he went out your yeah, your neck of the woods, way out of those like great like yeah Minnesota. Or something. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, that do really good public radio, yeah. by the yeah. way, out there in the upper Midwest. Yeah. I just want to tell you. So, and now he's back, and he does a noon show, which is then brought rebroadcast, I believe, at eight. Yeah. So, heck, you were in prime time, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm moving up, baby. <laughs> well, I just want Finally, to after, after I, 15 years in, the, I, in print, my career is launching into, into 15 minute spots on. I just want you to remember who gave you the most exposure. That's and true. Your, That's true. Your big shove. I, believe me, I will not forget the. And gave you an audience right. of now you, right. that you carry. Right. Yeah. I'll never forget the little people who made it possible. <laughs> when... <laughs> okay. Well, now that we have all that. Yes, cleared out of our systems. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello. Welcome. Good morning. It's hello. April 3rd. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have it on good authority that tomorrow it might actually start to feel a little yes, like spring. I yes, have heard that, then, I have heard that rumor, I think too. then we're just off and running. I don't appear to be giving a Hitler salute. <laughs> We're off and running, right? I'm actually serious. I'm I'm usually a person who is not all like, yeah. oh, it's so cold, or but You've honestly, I got to get this kid out of the damn house. Is what it goes yeah, yeah, right. To, I, that's so. true. true. <laughs> Let him run off. Some, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the funniest headline ever in yeah. today's Post Gazette. <clears throat> it's a little one, so you might have missed it. I shall read it for you. Police. Busting speeders at Squirrel Hill Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Is that not funny? Those, those people should be rewarded. My uh, God. They should be Who encouraged. Who ever heard of a speeder in the Squirrel Hill Tunnel? <laughs> I have. I don't think I've been in the Squirrel Hill Tunnel for about two, three years. I never go yeah. in. I just, I, I will go out of my, I'll go to Homestead, down to Kennywood, and right, and right, back up to right, avoid it. Yeah. I will not. Police busting speeders. You know, the funny thing about that tunnel is 
I, I have to use it sometimes because my father lives out out in uh, Murraysville, and we sometimes go yeah. to visit the old man. And I'm constantly surprised that like the, the the timing of the jams that happen, like rush hour, okay. You, fake. but it's like Sunday afternoon inbound. It's like four thirty. And traffic is like backed up to you know whatever well, the Wilkinsburg well, exit. Well, that's so because, how is this possible? Well, how is this happening? Four thirty on a Sunday afternoon. I would think that that was because somebody might have a, a six o'clock dinner reservation downtown on a Sunday. <laughs> just on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just what what I don't know. Avoid it. I asked we we um my 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 uh, music editor. You okay? Of course, I'm okay. Because okay, you're a professional. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be great is if I blathered on for another five minutes as you turn blue or whatever, <laughs> just doing the universal <laughs> choke. My, our, our, our music editor once dated a woman who was an expert, like a traffic, who had a degree in traffic yeah, yeah, engineering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I once asked her, I said, what? What gives? What, what would it take to yeah. fix this problem? And what she told me, is, I was like, you know, because I thought maybe those lights that they have on on-ramps to kind of pace right. the way people get on, you know, and she said, actually, the best thing they could do is Blow simply, is simply make, make the tunnel a little wider, wider right. a little taller. And she said, not even more lanes, just make it wider. And I said, why would that work? And she said, because people's brains then would process that they didn't have to slow I don't down. think so, because I think it's said. being enclosed. I, I don't know. I know they feel whatever. But that's, yeah, exactly. I, she I, said I making just, that wider would, 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 would make people less whatever about it. My that's favorite story about the Squirrel Hill exchange, that interchange right, there, right. which is like... Mind-boggling. Uh, yeah. Mind-boggling. Yeah. It is like, you couldn't have made this up if you um, were tripping. Right on acid, right. and you know, come up with something, and then in the morning, I mean, I mean, be sure you've made the greatest interchange in all the universe, and in the morning, <laughs> you've looked at it, and right. you know, it looked like a what? What the hell? Is <laughs> it, you know, it looked like a, a bar nap, an IUD kind of gone yeah. insane. It was like. <laughs> Just insane. So, I was interviewing once. This is huh. ages ago. Um, a guy in um, drug and alcohol rehab. Yeah. Uh. And he happened to mention that he had <laughs> once had as a client someone who was really in denial about his problem. And the guy actually said to him, the one in denial, "How can you suggest?" <laughs> That I have a problem. When I, I was supposedly when I had a problem, designed the Squirrel <laughs> Hill interchange <laughs> and the drug and reality. Yeah. Okay. What's he, what's your professional, what did he respond? Because I, I imagine he had to be careful about his professional obligation to, did he uh, just say? No, he said, I rest my case. Oh, did he really say that? Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, well, what the hell did anybody yeah, say? Yeah. Jeez. Well, the guy they got to get is the West End Circle guy who originally designed that whole what nightmare. The that hell? was just that sign. I always loved that sign that was just like <laughs> that looked like an IUD. It was like, where, where, where am I supposed to be? What's going? I know it's really it's ridiculous. What? what so what else? Is well, there? you know, we've really done the morning talk show thing. We've talked about weather and we've talked about traffic. It just feels like what's left except to do an ad for Wait, um, traffic and weather. Together. <laughs> Traffic and weather together. And at other stations, you may have to wait till, let's see. Traffic and weather on the nines. Well, forget it, babes. We're on the seven and right. we're done. Right. All we need now is like some goofy horn sounds to, like, you know, like they have one morning. <laughs> like the morning drive. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. I just have to go, I You're right. Um, Okay. Well, so yesterday after I encountered you on your way to uh, central Pittsburgh, on Pittsburgh's historic... South side. That's another thing they say that makes me a little crazy. Right. Historic South side. It's plenty historic. Well, yes, but so is where I am. I sit here now on historic Smithfield Street, which is every bit as historic. (laughs) More so, probably. Yeah, I think so, more so. So take that, Guggenheim. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'd have him on the show as a, you know, yeah. a, a new colleague in town, but he's preparing for his when I'm yeah. on, so it's not going to happen. Okay. So um, the other thing, oh, what was it? Oh, so I left you and I head over to the um, my, my bus stop, mm-hmm. and something is odd. <laughs> 
There's a, just the one thing. <laughs> well, a different odd. You must know, have, there's must have been an off odd. peak. Must no, have been an off peak route. It's always a little odd, but but and wonderfully interesting right. yes. to me. Yeah. I just love it. I love it. But a lot of people looked really happy, and they were all holding these little boxes uh, of chocolate right, cake. Right, the cake thing. Yeah. And I thought the hell's going on? That's what I thought. What the hell's going on? As anyone would say. How come everybody's got cake and I don't? <laughs> that you that actually that? should be the motto <laughs> for the United States of America. Get rid of e pluribus unum. It should be how come everybody has cake and I don't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then later in the day, somebody sent me a picture taken from high yeah. atop. Yeah. Did you see that I Instagram? See that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that funny? It Someone is. took a picture like from the 50th floor of some building that can see down into uh, Market Square. Good God, there were like 700,000 people waiting in what would be, if it were in an airport, the TSA, TSA line from hell, right? Right. To get a free cake. We got a call? Hello. Hi. Or not. Hello. Hello. Hi. He's gone. Well, that was odd. (laughs) So, okay, what do you make of that? Is, first of all, are people that hungry? Are people that unable to afford to buy a cake so they would wait for four hours? Are people just uh, programmed that if something is free, they'll do what? That's it. It's that free cake, Lynn. I don't understand what well, the problem is here. Was, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It, the temperature was in the 20s, okay? It was cold. Yeah. And let's say you show up there wanting a free cake, and you see that the line's going to take you about three hours. Yeah. You still wait for a, And it wasn't a huge cake. It was a cake, yay, like this. People, People do stuff for free stuff. I mean, we, you know, this is a, we hear as I because know. we have our, we have paper gives out giveaways and the radio stations I know, have giveaways I and know. People, people are driven. Well, the times when I used to work in a legitimate radio station <laughs> 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 and we would sometimes set up a booth, yes, you right. know, at yeah. some event right. and I would be forced to sit in it. <laughs> And meet the public yeah, and your I, I, listeners. Ah, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Well, my listeners don't go to things like that, I don't think. So what would happen is one person after another would show up. They'd, like, look at the sign. They wouldn't know who I was from a hole in the ground. They'd walk up. They were mouth breathers. I'm sorry. And they said, what you give it away? <laughs> That's always what they'd say. And it's, I would apologetically say, a signed autograph of me, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, like a no t-shirt. A, a paper clip. <laughs> I mean, it was like nothing—a paper, a, a bookmark, and they dutifully, you know, scarf up anything you have and then move on to the next one. God, you know, conservatives say that the media has contempt for the American people, but I don't think that's fair. <laughs> Mouth breathers. <laughs> I'm sorry. It can't, you know, I will. I will say this. Sometimes, and, and I have noticed this. Very, most of the people who come to us when they get free stuff, and sometimes they come when when the editorial staff are the only people left because they'll come like a, after five or something. Um, most of them are very pleasant and nice. But there are there's a certain percentage of folks, especially the ones who always win, always who 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 can really be very unpleasant sometimes. Well, it's not there seems even to be unpleasant. an attitude of impl- of entitlement about it all. That it's not just unpleasant. Sometimes it's creepy. And you, you feel like, uh, is there security here? Yeah. Is there, I mean, really, it's, um, geez. And, of course, there isn't for us, although I feel confident that any member of my staff would gladly lay down their lives for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's funnier. <laughs> that's funnier than speeders in this little <laughs> tunnel. Oh, my God. All right, so uh, that that absolutely took the thought I had oh, I'm out, sorry. Of, out of my oh security. Did you see Asa Hutchinson? Mm-hmm. 
Used to be a yeah, senator, I think. Jerk from, senator yeah. from somewhere in the from jerk some south. jerk state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now he's like the jerk head of uh, he's some something jerk with the organization. NRA. No, oh, really? he's oh, with yeah. the NRA. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. He was he was chosen as their guy. Remember uh, when 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 Wayne Lapierre had that post Newtown. Um, press conference and he was like we are going to now convene a thing asa hutchinson was the guy he put in charge of their special oh, okay but so thing. asa went over to the totally dark side yeah. and there he was do he was doing a an interview or a press conference at um the national press club yesterday yeah. mm-hmm. and he arrived with the kind of security that like um a visiting head of state yeah. with a, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, with a real a threat. A, a with security a threat on his head. With a security I, detachment. They were like yeah. big, uh, you knew they were all, uh, big, 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 big. there was this, there was that. There were metal detectors. This is at the National Press Club huh? where all there were reports. And, and somebody said to him, hey, what the hell? We've been here for Bigger fish than you, buddy yeah. boy. Yeah. Never have we seen this. This is really ridiculous. And he said, uh, we believe in the security. Blah, 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 blah. I, what no. is with the... I, you know, there's an interesting... The par- I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. I've often thought there's a paranoia. <clears throat> oh, yeah, no question. Base, obviously. But, yeah. but are they kidding? Are they, no, I mean, this is they their, really this is their are that paranoid. This now they think everyone's going to kill them. I don't know if I don't know if they're I don't know if they're legitimately that paranoid, but clearly, well, clearly the whole mo, the whole raison d'être of, of everything that they've been doing is about creating a culture of fear. So naturally, that's that's wow. the message you put out there. There's actually it's funny you mention this because I, I, it was either I can't remember which website it was. I think it might have been Salon.com had just sort of a fascinating little feature, which is they took. The two thousand every cover image from the you know the NRA has a couple of different magazines, and they just showed you the covers from two thousand twelve, and 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 they were amazing. Like what? It was just utterly images. fearful. You know, it was it was all this fast and furious stuff. It was like we have to stop Obama or now or 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 the whole shooting match is over, so to speak. It was just cover after cover of this sort of fear mongering. And so if that's what you <clears throat> hair get, trigger that's kind of who thing. you listen to, and then you turn in Fox. And then you turn yep. in Hannity. Well, of course, yeah. that's your mindset. Yeah. yeah. So they. Just so it's it's utterly consistent. I don't know. Does does he really? Did he really feel threatened by reporters? Probably oh, not. God. But it's totally consistent with every other thing that they do. Wow. So yesterday we had a very high tone show, and um, oh, did we? Yes. <laughs> because I wasn't on it, or <laughs> I found some stories that I hadn't. Uh, <clears throat> thought of before and i happen to tell the story about um the lost extraordinary video of an elephant's anus while farting <laughs> i see that was irony before <laughs> so so okay so this is something that i had witnessed and now i now, wish wait, I now had. you're gonna show it to now you're no, gonna I'm make not. me look I'm at it i'm gonna show okay. you an email that came in I mean, I went through a whole day at work, then class. I even went tanning. Aaron, you shouldn't tan after that. And when I finally got home a little bit ago and sat down at the computer, the first thing I Googled, elephant <laughs> farts. And he did come up with a, a video. It's nowhere near what mine was. I mean, it's not even close because you can't see a damn thing. Well, now, do we, are we actually going to watch it? No. No. Thank and, you. And, Thank you. you know, I appreciate it's noth- that. It's nothing compared to what I, what I had. <laughs> <laughs> would be would go to a gazillion views on YouTube if I had it. Right. Damn it. It of course ended up on the cutting room floor because we couldn't put it on TVs, and right, I never right. bothered to save it. Yeah. Damn it. When I think of all the video, I could be the YouTube queen. You could be <laughs> on the base, but really, would that would you want that to be your legacy? Well, part of it. <laughs> That would be two zoo stories that you'd be very strongly associated with in your career. The I dolphin, believe the I Amazon have... River Dolphin, too, would be another one. The Amazon River Dolphin and the Elephant Fart. <laughs> and, oh, I've got others. The Lion Taking Me Down. The um, Two Humped Camel. You don't <laughs> want to know. <laughs> 
and the chimpanzee on roller skates. Oh, my God. <laughs> the chimpanzee. Those are all true stories. Of course they are. If you the live your life in television. On TV news, yes, sir. Right. The what, as the feature reporter. Right? Yeah, right. You know, I think some woman, I forget who it was, who was a feature reporter, wrote a book ages ago, and she... <laughs> I, the title was, I think, Riding the Elephant. <laughs> yeah, right. right and right, that's, right, what, right. that's what happens to, I never rode an elephant. So as you watched the, the monkey roller skating, oh, that did, was so did funny. you, did you kind of think about your career goals at that point, or were you really happy to be there? I was so happy. Good. Because that nice. was on a live television talk show I had. And we were, I don't know, I was interviewing as maybe the circus was in town or something. And it was some. <laughs> maybe? You know, yeah. Right. <laughs> What kind of market is this where there's just like <laughs> roller skating? Well, all I can tell you is the guy I was interviewing had this adorable chimp on his lap with roller skates on his feet. <laughs> and he said, he said, so go ahead, show how well you roller skate. So, you know, a studio floor, and this is, this is a fact you will not know. A television studio floor is the flattest. Yeah smoothest. Right, right. There can be no... Because stop and think about it. They're moving the camera in and all of a sudden right, oh, oh, right, the camera right, goes right, 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 No, it's just right, flat right. and smooth. Yeah. Well, he said, go ahead, Zippy, or whatever. <laughs> Whoa. This monkey started just doing a little... <laughs> doing his thing. Back and forth. And then you saw on his face. Wow! Wow! This is the coolest surface I have. Wow! And that monkey went nuts. He was doing, he was making bigger and bigger circles. The ca- We were all, the camera guys were doubled over laughing. He was in and out of frame. Nobody could function. You, we could not stop him. The, the guy couldn't stop him. He was like, he went insane. <gasps> Pirouetting. Oh, it was so cute. You so he didn't lose control, though? Because I would think that maybe a monkey on an unfamiliar surface like that might lose control. No, he up. just went stark raving nuts. That's great. That's great. He was so happy. <laughs> oh, it was the sweetest thing you ever saw. I can't remember how it ended. It must have ended okay. Like, right. he didn't crash into yeah, anything. Right. Or anything. <laughs> Took out the weather girl. But I, <laughs> I was the weather girl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, here's what we're going to do, guys. Okay. We're on the gonna, 20s. And then we're going to come back. And sober up. Right. Because there are stuff to talk about because we have to talk about the mayor's race and some of that other stuff. Okay. Okay. Because uh, he talked about it all yesterday on my competitor, so they're like 24 <laughs> hours ahead, and I better we got to catch up. Very good. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call lynn at 412 316 Three three eight one. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for a look at the Jewish Film Festival, plus Mercury Soul, Eric Clapton, and Mike Nesmith. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone at citypapermobile.com. It's warming up outside, so get to Littles for all your spring needs. Littles has everything for men, women, and children to stay in style for this upcoming hot summer. Lots of great colors from Dansko, New Balance, Steve Madden, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Get her, she didn't hear me at Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> All right. So. So. First, there were a hot... No, there were so... I mean, stop and think about this idiotic mayor's race. First, there was the incumbent, who was a shoe in as far as anyone knew. But there were two guys willing to take him on. That would be Mr. Bill Peduto and Mr. Michael Lamb. And they had actually... They had headquarters. They had, you know, real <laughs> offices estate. With, they yeah. had offices. They had they had a s- staffs. They raised money. They did all this stuff. And then the mayor uh, decided, I'm just forget it. I don't want to do this anymore. And all of a sudden, a million wannabes come out of the woodwork. At one point, I think there were about eight of them, yeah. eight or nine. 
whatever. Then one by one, they start Seven. dropping yeah. off. The latest one to drop off was a little bit more of a shock because he was one of the originals, right. not one of the Johnny Come Latelys. It was somebody with a storefront in Greenfield I just drove by the other day and signs and all kinds of stuff, spent a lot of money already. And um, all of a sudden, there's Michael Lamb. and uh, On April Fool's Day, by the by. Which... And it wasn't just April Fool's Day. It was the opening day of the Pirates game. And everybody's over there, and he's over here. And I'm thinking, no one wants to hear any of this today. Go away. But it was April Fool's Day. Why didn't anybody do anything with that? I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, um, Who's the I did, I did actually call, I did actually call the campaign and say, is this, this is for joke? real, right? right? Because I have, because we're on deadline day, and I was like, if I, if I go over there, and it turns out that you've gotten an endorsement by Steely McBeam or something like that. I'm going to cold cock your candidate, essentially. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, so, um, no, it was it was very sad, too, because you go, I mean, the worst part is you go, and you go to these things, and of course, you're still surrounded by the trappings of the campaign that was going on up until this moment. And so you, so I pull up, and there in the window, they've got a, you know, kind of like one of those, you know, they kind of soap the window to spell out a message, and the message said, volunteer today. And I just thought... You better hurry. <laughs> like, if you want a door knock, you got about ten minutes. So, um, so yeah, it was it was the timing of it was surprising. Certainly, the other I mean, the other thing that made it weird is that you know there's a calendar for when you have to file your petitions, and there's also a date by which you're you file to drop out, and after that date, you need to like get a court order to get yourself removed from the ballot. The date where it's it's the easiest to drop out was just a few days before that. It was March 27th. That's when um, <clears throat> Darlene Harris dropped out. Um, Jim Furlow had dropped out. A few Why is that date? That. That's just that's just because it's easier. And so you, one what do you would mean have thought it's because easier? because essentially now he has to kind of go and get a court order. And the general oh, you date mean by he which, missed the date. You he missed that date. Yeah, yeah, he missed it because if he had done this on the twenty seventh, okay, it would have so. been he would have been out along with. So it's this weird thing of like. Why? Okay, so let's it. surmise why. Because obviously well, Jack Wagner and his minions right. had not, twi- had not. Whatever hadn't gotten him uh, to to do it yet. I mean, that had to be where it was coming from. Well, I mean, what what his representation is is this was a decision I made, and I came and please, I talked. Please, to please, please. And there is there is reason to think at least that he was doing polling right up until the last, looking for a way. Could to, he um, win? To, could, to, he could he win? He and the answer and the answer turned out to be that he just that he just couldn't do it. Well, and, anybody, we all knew. Three weeks ago, he couldn't win. Well, we all knew. I mean, we knew even before. Yeah, from the outset, from the out, he has never. He and this is, you know, I, I, you know, I wrote this when I kind of wrote up the the story of him dropping out. He from the first, his campaign never really got its footing. Never beneath it. I mean, even coming out of 2012, you've got these two rivals, as you point out to to the mayor. They're both very. They both present very similarly as these sort of a bit wonky but reform minded good government types. Right. Um. Both good men. And both good men and. and but the but of the two of them, Bill Beduto had more money. He already had more backing thanks to the support um, of, of Rich Fitzgerald, the county executive, to no small extent. Um, so he just he and just I came out of that this, with a better organization. More hunger in the belly. Yeah, I think that's true. Peduto yeah. wants it. He's been wanting it for so long. This is like a kid who. I mean, I bet Peduto. Uh, when he was five and sat on Santa's lap and Santa said, what do you want for Christmas? He said, to be the mayor of Pittsburgh. Actually, probably said to be a hockey player. You think? Yeah, probably. When he was five, he still plays. He really wants this. And it's it's been his soul. And he spent years building, and this is, I mean, nobody questions this. impressive resume. He spent years, not just a resume, but a a network of supporters. That's true. You know, so you even look at the, you even look at last year's uh, state representative races. You know, a lot of people who are on Team Pittsburgh helped Ed Ganey win his state rep race um, against Joe Preston in the East End. And now, guess what? Ed Ganey's, Ganey comes out and Ganey's supports him. He was the former city, uh, the, the former chair of the city committee for the Democratic Party. Not not a bad guy to know and to have in your corner, especially when the black vote is, is up for grabs the way it is. So, you know, I mean, very smart, long-term strategic thinking. And Bill had just put more, le- yeah, you're absolutely right, more heart, but also a lot more legwork, too. Okay, so... <sighs> It also seems that everybody, all these other would-bes or spoilers, were there to stop Peduto. What is there like some? What's going on? The, the, the lamb wag. I mean, is there some? What's? 
How do they perceive Peduto? Do they just personally not like him? Do they think his style of uh, of politics will somehow minimize them or change things in a way that they aren't comfortable? Why, I just feel like there's a lot of animus at work here. Yeah, well, th- that's certainly true, for example, of Jim Furlow. Furlow Jim, hates Jim Furlow. Jim Furlow. I, I mean... Um, Why? I think, I, yeah, I mean, first of all, Furlow has been in um, has been a supporter of Mayor Luke Ravenstahl for 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 almost since the outset of that of that Which administration. Seems odd too. It does seem because it does I gotta seem tell odd. you, Furlow is the darling of the lefty lefties. Yeah, of a certain He's, kind of uh, lefty. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Pretty lefty lefty. Yeah, yeah, right. Leftier than me. And I think, and I think part so of this how does, too. How does that work? Well, and I think when part I tell of them, it, you know, he's Ravenstahl's best buddy. They say, huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, there's they a very close allegiance. I think you know. I think part of it too for for Jim is. <laughs> Jim has a certain idea of what a lefty should be, and Bill Peduto doesn't conform to that. I think he sees Bill as being too, you know, not not radical enough in terms. Well, of excuse his, me, right? but Bill Peduto isn't kissing Ravenstahl's ass, yeah, was, so Furlow has Furlough's, an idea of what a lefty should be, and Furlow's and he's in bed with Luke but Ravenstahl. Let's, and let's remember and that from machine? from Furlow. For Furlow has been reappointed to the URA board twice by. By Ravenstahl, there's there's obviously Yvonne Zober was um, somebody who was close to to, to Jim for uh, before he became uh, the chief of staff for, for the mayor, and you know Furlow will say, look, on the URA board, I have been able to accomplish things that I was not able to accomplish ah, yes. during the previous administration. So, yes. I mean, that's that's his case. So, I think for for somebody like Furlow, yes, very much so. Um, what you're seeing now, I think, um, with with Wagner's entrance in the race, Wagner isn't a spoiler for anything. Wagner is Wagner is running to win, and um, and what's and what you're seeing happen is, but he is an opportunist in that he did he chose not to run until he, yeah, Ravenstahl. His, sure, but he was always. He, what yeah, his yeah. game plan previously was he was going to run as an independent in November, sure. depending on how this all sh- on how this thing shook out. So obviously, is he an opportunist, or is he seen is he shifting strategy according shifting tactics according to a change in the in the reality of the race? I mean, I, I think he's doing that. But what you're seeing what you're seeing happen now with Wagner is a lot of the people who were with Ravenstahl before, including Furlow, for example, are going to go to are Wagner. now are now rallying behind Wagner's side. And what's interesting to me, and what you're going to see a lot more of in the days ahead, is once Lamb dropped out, and when Lamb dropped out, he too endorsed Wagner, um, Peduto's camp issued a press release that basically said, this race has now become a choice between those who are serious about reforming government exactly and everybody right. else. And so what you're going to see is, is very all much the old all these lines. It. So it's been crazy. Things have been all across the map in terms of who stands for what and where and why. Um, but what you're really seeing now is this race starting to become um, very clearly delineated. And it's been clear to us, to me, and to a lot of other people watching this, that this was going to be, a t- once once Ravenstahl dropped out and Wagner got in, it was very okay. clear this was going to be a two-person race between Wagner okay, and, and so if you really want to change in the way things go on around here, you want a shot at a change, Peduto's the candidate. These other guys, even little, you know, red diaper furlough, albeit with all his credentials, um, Jack Wagner, who I personally know and is a nice guy, yeah. is and would be in any other political configuration a Republican. He's a Republican. See, here's what people don't understand about the politics here. You say, I went to all Democrat. No, you have to say you're a Democrat to get on the ballot in any reasonable. You're going to disagree. I don't know that I died. He's a Republican. If you put Jack Wagner. He's too pro labor to be a Republican. He's too pro labor to be a Republican. So he's what's considered a Western Pennsylvania Republican. It's how they consider no. He's considered a Western Pennsylvania Democrat of a certain pro labor, totally but, but more conservative. No. Yes, more conservative oh, yes. when it comes to he, social issues, that's for why. example. The yeah. conservative unions, cops, firefighters, they'll be with him. Yep, they're, they are with they, him. But they, they are with him. But they're with Republicans. They they endorse Republican candidates. They have, they, they have nationally, done so. Nationally, statewide, they do. Because those are those Reagan Democrats. Right. Those are the Reagan Democrats who are in every way Republicans except on labor issues. That is the only thing. I wonder if Jack Shea is listening today. It would be great to get a phone call from him. <laughs> 
I'm just, I would, I mean, I, I agree with you. First you know of all, what? the FOP has endorsed, the FOP has endorsed Republicans in previous mayoral races in this town. It happened a few, it happened in 2007, and it happened because of the residency issue, because the, the mayor was dead set on not waiving okay. the residency requirement. But I don't think you can say necessarily that the firefighters, I don't, I'm not aware of firefighters. Okay, but I just want to say, if you're, if you're a Democrat, and you're really a Democrat, Peduto's the Democrat running. Opinions expressed on this show do not represent those of Sydney. All right, just because you got to be some kind of, you know, like, oh, I'm, 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 no, I'm sorry. That's the way I see it. Okay. Fair enough. Anyway, today. I thought Tom Murphy was a Republican. I thought that's Mike Caligiuri was a Republican. That's funny. I, I don't think I've ever seen a Democrat as, as uh, mayor here. Be, when there's a city, when there's a one party city. Sure. You There's end a spectrum up with within both that party, parties. right? right. Uh, with, you the same spectrum. It's the same spectrum. Exactly but within the, yeah. right. Yeah. And the the cozy re- relationship with the powers that be in this town, um, with the so-called uh, Democrats. I mean, I'm sorry. This is where I'm, and that's why I really furlough. Give me a break, <laughs> Jesus God. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else to get that out to say? Uh, I would just I would just note that uh, there's a a debate coming up this evening at the University of Pittsburgh with mayoral candidates, and also on Saturday um, at uh, the Obama six to twelve school in East Liberty. If people are interested, I'll be live tweeting both those events (laughs) at my Twitter account, C Potter (laughs) PGH. What did I say about your other thing? I will. um, What did I say that offended you? I don't remember. I made an effort to listen. Oh yeah, right. Is that what you're I'll doing? I'll make just now? an effort to, to stay awake for watch your <laughs> No, tweets. please stay. No. don't do me any favor, and sweetheart. Really, yeah, yeah, really. Like, I'm really kidding. Yeah. Okay. So then the other thing is, I really this is incredible. Yeah. Rich Fitzgerald, county executive, uh, who really wants to be an executive. This is a guy who he likes the idea the buck stops here. Yeah. He also wants to have complete control, and he's so open about it, it's funny. Yeah. So he's the one who is, every time he appointed somebody to a position, he would say, all right, the position's yours, but first I want an undated resignation letter from the position I just gave you for my file so I can can your ass whenever I want. Okay. Well, this created quite a kerfuffle. Yeah. And amazingly, I thought he he just he dropped it. He said, "I'm turning in all the letters. I'm dropping down," and that's sort of interesting. Yeah, he was very upfront about it. Now yes. he says it ain't worth the political yeah. crap I'm getting for it. So goodbye. Yeah, I mean the other yeah, and, and it's you? to his credit. I mean, I we've said I this on the show before yeah. that we respect the fact that he's been open about it and and, and above board. Um, and it's to his credit now that he is he's backed off in the position. I will say, part of what's always sort of mitigated my outrage about this is I've been in this job for a long time, and I cannot remember uh, a, a single case <coughs> where a, a, a board member who was appointed by a politician bucked that politician on any major yeah. issue. I can never remember it happening. And there and we should also point out um that there are other ways around this. I mean Luke Ravenstall for a long time did almost the same thing that, that Rich Fitzgerald was doing. What he would do is he would leave people in their uh, authority board positions after their terms have expired. And they're, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to keep somebody in there until you replace them. But he would, leave, he would leave them in these unexpired terms rather than reappointing them for one year, two years, three years, whatever it was. And that, because at the, he too could then, the moment they did something to displease them, he could finally go about appointing a replacement. So there are all kinds of ways around this stuff. And just the, the way the politics of this situation works are very rarely does a board appointee ever, for all the talk of board independence, it just doesn't play out that way. So That's why they get appointed. By right. The, yeah. yeah, right. Right. So that's uh, so to me, it's so that's one reason why this was never like that huge an issue. Although I, w- I would like to point out that we were the first people, City Paper and our Lauren Daly was really the first person to document on the record that this is where Fitzgerald, that Fitzgerald saw authorities essentially as departments. Right. Whose, whose leadership he felt free to, to hire and fire. Um, but I've never felt like he was egregious. He was just more open. Open. <laughs> I know. He's just. And, he's a, 
Yeah. So, so the way I want to work right. it. And so now I think right. what he's done now is just sort of acknowledge the political reality, which is this: the appearance is not worth is not it. worth no. not worth it when you can probably get what he wants no matter what. <clears throat> okay. Uh, question from Allison. I haven't read this yet, so okay. we'll read this. Early. Any information on where the change to the electoral college bill is in Harrisburg? Yeah, I think um, my understanding at this point, the last the last I heard about it, and I think if there had been a change, I would have heard something since then, is that it's basically sitting in, in committee. I don't want to, and we've been on the show, and I've said before, I've never been convinced that this was going to be anything more than some BS feel-good measure for Republicans. Um and I think you would, I think you yelled at me for that or something. Uh, and I think it is, it's dangerous, of course, to get complacent. But as far as I know, it's still in committee. Um, and I don't see a prospect for it changing anytime soon, although God only knows with these people. Okay. Yeah. There. I'll agree to that. Allison goes on, while up front the NRA is outrageous, they went through the back door and added two amendments yeah. to the continuing resolution bill. Right. No audit of gun dealers' inventories. So that that just passed? I didn't even know this. That, yeah, my understanding no is No audit of gun dealers' inventories by government and no tracing of guns. Right. So has anything changed? Nah. Not yet. That's for sure. Uh, Allison says, I sent Toomey an email and told him that even if he doesn't vote for a gun bill, at least vote against a filibuster of any gun bill. These yep. bills need to come to the floor so people know where their senators yep. stand. The Senate used to be a dignified body, but with new members like Cruz and Paul, it's going to become a clown show. Going to? <laughs> well, the House already is. Right. There's been a sort of a sense of a little more decorum on the in the upper house. Please explain, if Republicans are so afraid of becoming a minority, why in the states are they doing everything they can to increase the populations of people they don't want? By limiting access to birth control. The, the reverse of the sex Rush Limbaugh Sex education yeah. and abortions. In Texas, where else, they decreased Planned right. Parenthood funding by 100 mil, yeah. but it cost the state an additional 250 mil uh, in costs of increased births. Yep. Listen, Allison, are you suggesting that these guys, like, think ahead? Like, think of consequences? Like, think of what the... I don't know. Unbelievable. Oh, I love a line like this, unsubstantial. Oh, 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 no, no, oh, no, 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 no not going there. <laughs> don't you do it. Anyway. Uh, no. We're hey, not. It's, t it's we're on the 20s. Oh, we're on the 20s. Uh, yes, Joseph. Um, that's all I have to say to you, yes. Although I'm not sure about that second part. No, nope, no, nope, let's just get to All the right, let's just go to the, and I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. It has to do with sexual sexuality. Um, just don't, 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 don't. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BargBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, and shows. This week only, get discounts up to 30% for Tamari. BargBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BargBargains.com. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face -face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you'd never consider texting, so parents. why would you do it During while driving? On what NASCAR driver Casey Kane here, in the asking you to please stop the text, and together we can stop the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. <clears throat> Line. What? <laughs> Line. Line? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know. I, what I want to say, you won't yeah, let me. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, what else can I tell you about myself? <laughs> oh, okay. No, wait. Here's, a, here's something good, too. Okay. Do you know a state representative named, it's a very odd name, Tara Tuhill? Yes. Oh, dear, yes. Is it Tara or Tara? I don't know. I, she represents uh, one of Butler. the more rusticate. No, no, I think further out than that. Okay, it says Butler Township. Butler, Butler Township, Township is further out That's in the, to the East. Yeah, it's more in the rural T area. Oh, because I wondered why I never heard her name. Yeah. Well. There was a great story about her last year. Okay, okay, maybe you can 
You can't say that now and not tell no, no, the because audience. It's, no, be, oh, right. So this the story the was story. right. No, so this is the story. Right. So there was this. So there was She's this. A Republican. Right. And and right. these photos surfaced of her with harding it up with a bong with a bong on the table and and, bleh, and, and seemingly kissing a girl. Yeah, I think you know the kind of stuff that happens to people when they're like in college or just out of it and smoking pot and things like that. Wait so it became a, a big, minute. So it became a big thing in the, for a very brief period of time in her race. You, and, are you suggesting that pot leads to homosexuality? No, I'm just saying people people party and do stuff <laughs> under the influence of, of of substances they might not otherwise do if they were mostly alcohol. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah. There's nothing to say she wasn't drinking. At the she same was thing. drinking, smoking, yeah, she was and engaging in libidinous activities right. unbefitting a conservative Republican. <laughs> if she were a liberal and yet, Democrat, and yet apparently, apparently they do it all the time, is what we find out every every other week. Yeah, so, so anyway, so this video emerged, yeah. and it yeah. was, and, and, and the, on the video with this, uh, her in the, yeah. his, it said, does Pennsylvania Republican State Representative Tara Tuhill believe in traditional Republican values? Uh, Pennsylvania Republicans deserve yeah. representatives who share their values. Right. So that would lead you to believe that this video is coming from uh, a right wing uh, source horrified, Maybe. horrified that they've potentially or somebody elected. or somebody who wants to, di- to to discredit her with right wing conservative voters who would be horrified. That is correct. And in fact, would oh. people. That's right. I didn't even know they caught. Did they catch somebody? I no, okay. wait a minute. Right. Wait right. a minute. By the way, all this video made her forced her to confirm yeah. that. Yes, I was one of the young women in these photos. Uh, and she says, I have changed right. since they those photos were taken. I'm sure she has. And she's very, in her re-election campaign last year, she was way out there uh, against marijuana yep. Uh, yep. decriminalization. Yep. 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 So the people who put it out are people who want marijuana decriminalized. And they wanted to show the hypocrisy. Oh, is that actually true? I didn't even know they found that out. Does, that, that, they must have just found this out because I had not heard that. Uh, <laughs> a subsequent statement okay. by an anonymous poster claimed that the video was not meant as a personal attack, but to call attention to her hypocritical opposition to decriminalization of small amounts of marijuana. Yeah. These photos Fair. depict a public official who promotes policies not informed by her life experience, but in spite of it. There are millions of young Tara Two Hills out yeah. there who like to party and experiment with drugs just as she did. They're right. smart. They're promising kids with bright futures who may one day become attorneys and state representatives, just as she did. Which, but, uh, which could only prove what kind of dangerous lifestyle taking drugs can lead to. That's right. You could become a state <laughs> representative. But unlike Tara Hill, some of them will suffer legal consequences yes, for right. their youthful indiscretion. Right. So... Um, Apparently, it says she was later targeted by another YouTube video, which took cues from the hacktivist collective Anonymous right. to pressure her to reverse her stance on marijuana or face the release of more damaging personal information. Dear me. The Philadelphia Inquirer reports that with a British accented female voiceover. <laughs> It said that legions were disappointed by her response to the surfacing of the photos showing her with what appeared to be marijuana, and the voice then demands she support decriminalizing the drug or else. Everyone has secrets, the voice intones. Please do not give us a reason to expose yours. Dun, dun, dun. One House Republican called these videos uber creepy. And now, get this. Shouldn't be too hard to find the the perpetrator there. There can't be that many people with British accents in Tara Two Hills District. (laughs) But listen to this. How did you know, chaps? Yeah. (laughs) The Pennsylvania State Police have responded to state Republicans, and they have started an investigation. Of what? Yeah. What's what's the crime? I don't know yet. That's interesting. Maybe that's what they're investigating. (laughs) I mean... Huh? I don't know. It's a it's a blackmail thing, I guess. I don't know. Oh, that's I mean, ridiculous. yeah, I don't so know. So why are they investigating? Because know. somebody. I mean, it would has it would the depend. To... The provenance of the imagery, of course, would be something. I mean, you could see, 
depending on where the images came from and how they were acquired, you could have a theft situation. But of course, I don't even know that they know what the images are or, the, or what this evidence is, so it's odd. Indeedy. Man, wonder <laughs> if she's token up right now. I hope so. I do too. You got to do something to take the edge off of those. Of the, of I would like more sessions. Republicans to smoke. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would help. I think, I think a higher percentage of them do than than are willing to allow. Oh it to hell! It, so. Give me. Uh, I mean, <laughs> did we? We took all our breaks. Oh we yes, did. I think you shut me up on the last one. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, here's something that I really love. Okay. The Associated Press. Yep. Style Guide. Ah. You yes. know about it? Right. I have a passing familiarity with it. What do you mean? <laughs> Explain what that is. It's like the Bible for yeah, journalists. For, yeah, for. Come on. I mean, we have our own. We, have our, we, we rely you, on everyone it. Everyone has their own, but the right. big we, daddy the is core of The core of what we do, as most other papers, is the Associated Press style guide. Which tells you what? Like how to? Various forms of usage. Everything from, you know, should you capitalize the word internet or hyphenate email to, um, you know, more more serious and substantive things, which I can't think of off the top of my head right now. <laughs> But um, reporters are expected to adhere to right. certain rules, and yes, the Post Gazette has its set of rules, right. and the City Paper has. Oh, the, so just uh, for example, homosexual should you use that word or whatever? Although we use a different media guide for that question, but those are those are more substantive issues. How are people referred to and things like that? Well, I just want to tell you that the AP has just changed yeah. um, its guide so that you are not going to be seeing two words together as you have so often. Moderate Republican? No. Ah, that's true. <laughs> no, the term is ah. illegal immigrant. Oh, uh, yes. Did you know about this? I had, I had heard. Okay. Well, think of all the stories you've read yeah. with illegal immigrants. and now I've with used the phrase myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh-uh. AP says, ain't it going to happen anymore. And their preferred phrase is? Is what un- undocumented, undocumented worker, I think, or something. Well, like that's that, what I, you know. I did this uh, did this work on immigrants in Pittsburgh, and one of the things you quickly become sensitized to is how ugly it is to call a human being illegal. Yeah. And what they're saying is, an action can be illegal. A person cannot. Oh, you don't agree with this. I, I, I have I have incurred people's wrath for this position, so I'll risk doing it again. I'm, I generally agree with what they're saying. I get, for me, the question is, is, when you are discussing people in their status as immigrants, right? The legal immigrant is, we are talking about the issue of people who come to this country and what defines their immigration status as opposed to other people's immigration status is they are not here in accord with the law. So I understand what the concern is, but I, I, I guess I find undocumented to sort of be. But that's right, the paper, or call them a paperless immigrant, or that just undocumented. makes it sound like they came, they paid by credit card. I mean, what's that? Undocumented. That's the same as paperless. They don't have the right papers. Okay. Paperless sounds. Paperless sounds like a very green thing to do. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Well. An undocumented. I mean, I understand the concern, and I go back and forth on this issue. But where I have often fallen down in the past is when we are talking not about, say, individual people. I would never say, you know, so and so, you know, is an illegal person or anything like that. But if I would say, if I was discussing the issue of immigration outside the boundaries of law, I would call that illegal immigration. I wouldn't call it undocumented immigration. You can use the term illegal immigration. Yeah. And I That's would say, and in, the, and in the context of talking about those who immigrate illegally, the people who commit the act of illegal immigration as a, as a group, as a class, I would probably still use that phrase, illegal immigration. Okay. So consequently, do we use the term illegals to refer to people who have committed crimes? You could, you would, if, if they've been convicted it. of a crime, you, you could call them felons. You could call them ex-convicts. You could call them But whatever. you don't call them illegal. No, but you use you use a word that you would you would call them felons. Okay, these so people I'm just are saying, not felons. but they're not. They haven't been convicted of they, anything. Exa- that's well, that's true. But they're they're immigrate. But they didn't come. They did not immigrate legally. That is the yeah. There you go. Um, that is that is what defines them for purposes of any discussion that has ever been taken place, at least in my experience. 
of illegal immigration. Why you right wing jerk? Okay. I, look, I could easily. You I understand. I understand the thing. I get empathetic. it. Empathetic. God I, knows. You know, I my heart Here's bleeds. Here's the one. Is, here's the one that's really awful. Yeah. Illegal alien. Yeah, that's that's bullshit. That I that one I did. I mean, I've boy, that's that. a twofer. But it shows how the term illegal is so ugly. Illegal alien. You get them with an adjective and you get them with the noun. Yeah. You make them sound unhuman. Yeah. They're not only aliens. And you could make the argument that alien is a perfectly reasonable you could make that word. Argument. Yes, you could. That defines somebody who is not an is, American is citizen. from elsewhere, right? You That's could right. make that argument. So why don't you make the argument that illegal alien is yeah. just fine and dandy? Yeah, I mean... The point, right? I, what you're what you're saying, I think, is that these are nuances of language, and nuances of language change quite a bit. And it may be that at some point in the in the future, I feel much differently about this. But you know, I guess this is where you know I'm what right now. I'm. I'm just going to use a verb that is being used a lot when people struggle to get to the right place, and it's called evolving <laughs> there we go okay. you're evolving, I, I may be evolving chris and it's good to know that, <laughs> that i'm that, not the fully formed <laughs> no that you're still struggling with this still, issue and we'll evolve we expect that to like, come around to your point of view <laughs> like the ohio senator and others right. who have evolved yes that you will right. come around to to your point of view which is the higher stage of evolution of course i understand in some respects yes <laughs> but I mean, maybe eventually a, I'll even use I'll even be able to use these thumbs. <laughs> you know what? If, you know what's amazing though is that people, if 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 something strikes you, if it's personal, you feel it immediately. Right. Right. And um, I'm thinking of uh, a lot of ones that I became, well, made to understand how hurtful these sure. terms are. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I fought tooth and nail on many of them, thinking, ah, come on. And then you just get a little closer to how it has an effect on people. Um, I'm trying to think of, well, one of, I remember um, a reporter in the newsroom ages ago, 25 years ago, having a fit. Her name was Faith Daniels. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. It's a beautiful blonde yeah. who did end up going to the network for a yeah, little yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, she was went ballistic one day in the newsroom because somebody had said in referencing a, somebody who'd been charged with a crime, so-and-so is the adopted son of blah, blah, blah. And she went nuts. Because adopted makes it sound... Well, like she said, what? Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Right. What does right. that have to do? Right. Why is that there? Right. And quite clearly it's there because there's this sense in people's heads who have kids the normal way <laughs> that if you are adopted, that that somehow makes you... It's worthy of note. Right. Right. Right? Right. Worthy of note. You didn't come from the stork. You came out of a court of law or something. Right. And so there's this need to separate right. you. And it had and nothing to do with the story. Nothing, nothing, okay. nothing, nothing, right. nothing. And I still see it all over the place. Right. She went ballistic. Yeah. Because she was adopted. Right. I didn't quite. I was about to ask what your no, response no, right. was. I didn't. I had. I was sort of stunned by I, it never occurred to me mm. that somebody could be so crazy about that. Mm. Then I became, years later, the pa- the oh, this is okay. I got it. The right, parent right. of right. a an adopted, child yeah. I adopted. Right. And now, oi, I see this all the time. Really? It That's makes me furious. Now I'll probably start it noticing makes, it too. I've never. I really. even get mad when, like, the zoo has a campaign saying, ab- ab- you know, adopt an animal. Adopt a chimpanzee, and you know, if I'm sitting with my son, I'm I'm wondering, how does that sound to him? He is adopted, and yeah, you can adopt a kid, you can adopt a gerbil, you can adopt uh, whatever, and I it makes you hypersensitive. Mm-hmm. It really does. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know where you'll draw the line, but the adopted thing, journalists still. 
don't have together at all. Yeah, that's interesting. You see it pop up all the time, and it makes me crazy. And it may, you know, it may be that it may be that if Pittsburgh had a larger immigrant population, I mean, we have certainly covered issues relating to immigrants here of of all legal stati um, in the past. But it's it's obviously not the issue the way it is in a lot of other cities. And it may be that you know, if if that was more of a thing, then I'd have a different feeling about it. I I hate to think that was the case. I'd much rather believe that. My position is, you know, clearly one of, of arrived at, you know, um, independent of such right. pressures, but it's possible. PJ is suggesting unofficial immigrant. <laughs> oh, it doesn't know, seem. It, doesn't, as, it seems also not a stretch or something. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Um, Lynn, I don't call them illegal. Aliens. I just think of them as potential Democratic yeah. voters. Let them in. Let them vote. I'm f- I'm for that. Look, I mean, this this is this is for me. This is like a this is a this is an argument about language, and I don't mean to minimize that because language is really important. But in terms of, I'm sure you and I on questions of immigration, when it comes to actually what the policy should be, I'm sure we're 100 percent in agreement on that. Oh yeah, stuff. absolutely, yeah. without a doubt. Um, here's another one nobody ever thinks about, but okay. I'll give you. I'll get. I'll give it. I'll give it to you. In hopes of opening your mind. <laughs> when I did, um, I used to host the Cerebral Palsy Telethon for um, years. And actually, that was one of the ways I ended up adopting. It was sort of very odd, but through them is how I ended up becoming a mother. Don't ask. And um, <laughs> il- uh, what was it? Um, damn it! Oh, yeah, I got it. So. I was told, you know, making my pitches for people to give money, you know, you had some poor per, nope, see right there I go wrong. You had a person and they're in a wheelchair and you say, confined to a wheelchair. Uh, Right, right, right. You know, do you have a child at home now who's running in the backyard? (laughs) Little Timmy will never know that. Yes, little Timmy will never know that. Little Timmy will spend his life confined. In a wheelchair. Well, if you have a kid in a wheelchair, that would make yeah, you right. go insane. Right. Because what they will say to you, and it's, it, it's, you know, it's like, oh, the wheelchair a lot keeps them from being confined. confined. Right, right, right. You idiot. <laughs> How do you think I'm confined when I've I can got, move. I actually got horsepower here. I can race you down yeah. the sidewalk, you yeah, I was nitwit. Say, yeah. I am not confined. I nearly got bowled over two days ago. That's right. Fact. Yeah, I am so. liberated. Right. Right. Very but true. people say it all the time. Yeah. Language. Yeah. Very important. It is. All right. Well, we'll hope to open Chris Potter's head more and more. Oh, many, many people have expressed that desire. (laughs) I can assure you. (laughs) (laughs) They weren't usually smiling at the time, though. Okay. And I just leave you with one more uh, admonition. Okay. Do not speed through the Squirrel Hill Tunnel (laughs) because the cops. Yeah. In fact. Are. Yeah. Just to be on the safe side, uh, you should probably pump your brakes a few times before you. Oh yeah, it. <laughs> no, definitely. It's narrow in there. I would say about thirty yards before you ride the brake. Right. It's, it's real narrow, the and kind of confined. And it gets dark. I don't care. Hey, look, you can't be I, too careful. No, We're no, all no, going to no. get there at the end. No, of the day. that's right. And everybody just relax. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Just slow it down. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher Potter. Always good to be here. And uh, thank you as well. That Tom no- Sokolowski tomorrow? Yes, that notorious. What did he say he wanted on his gravestone? I said, what would you put one word that could be on your marker? And he said something like, um, you know, it was sort of like Unrepentant. troublemaker. Oh, no, it was like, sort of like, you know, I, I forget. I forget the exact word, Tom. You'll have to. What would you, one word. Because we were talking about how. In the end, there's a stone over you, and you're described by one word, father. Yeah. Son. My, my father wanted to put, and he said this, I don't know how seriously, I guess I should probably talk to him about it yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, soon, because, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, he's uh, older. Yeah. Um, At least as old as me. Live a little, quit your job today. That's what he wanted to put Well, I think you should do it. Yeah. No, there's nothing more wonderful yeah. than tombstones with some showing life. Right. Showing personality. Right. Oh, do it. Yeah. Get it in writing. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, what's no, he no. going to do? Sue me if I don't do what he wants? No, it's too late. No, you get it in writing. 
<laughs> Mr. Potter, if you're listening and you were serious about that, I personally think that is a great idea. I will idea ask him the next time. And get it in writing. I will ask him the next time his demise comes up. Does it come up? I like to bring it up every so often. <laughs> a lot of families never talk about this yeah, kind of thing. Right. My father, from the eight, when I was two, I always remember him starting. He was always talking about it. Now, when I die, I want you children to. Blah, 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 blah. Now you know when I die. This is my, and it was like. <laughs> we thought he was. My entire childhood, I thought he was dying. <laughs> He lived to be 86. Oh, God bless him. God bless him, too. And when I die. <laughs> I think that's a better way to go about yeah, it, actually. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Thank you very much. Okay, we better shut up. Bye! <laughs>